Hey guitar fam and friends, it is 8.30 at night. Lillian just went to bed and now it is time to learn one of the most important solos in my opinion for every lead guitar player to learn. That is the intro solo to Thrill Is Gone by B.B. King. Give it a listen and then we'll dig into it. All right, this is gonna be a really great video. There are a lot of really good takeaways from learning this solo. Uh, but before we get into it, don't forget to go to guitarfam.com and create your complimentary account so you can get access to the first module of all of our premium courses and all of our free courses too. Also, uh, leave a comment below on this video. Let me know what other solos you would like to see covered here on the YouTube channel. All right, I'm gonna be teaching a lot more than just what frets to put your fingers on, kind of a paint by number thing. There are a lot of important concepts to take away from this solo. So the first thing you need to know over you know anything you're playing over or sewing over is the chord progression. That way all the shapes we're gonna be using will make a little more sense to have some context. So it's in B minor, and uh, it's just a B minor blues, at least for the most part, it starts out that way. So B minor for four measures, right? And then for two measures, you have an E minor or E minor seven. So it's just going from the one chord to the four chord in E minor, right? And then you go back to B minor for two more measures. And then you go to a G major seven, okay? Which is just the six chord in B minor. You can think of it that way. And then you have an F sharp dominant seven, which kind of hints at uh, B harmonic minor a little bit. So that's something to be aware of for measure. And then you go to B minor again for the last two measures. And I should mention that we have the jam track for you and the tab available on guitarfam.com, uh, the link for that lesson with all the resources will be below in the description for you. Okay, before we even start learning the notes here, one thing that I, I will say that's very important for this solo is to listen to it a lot. The more you listen to it, the easier it will be to learn this. Uh, and I find that's the way every solo is for me. If I can hear it in my head or sing it, I have a lot easier time memorizing the solo because I know what it sounds like and know what I should be kind of outputting on my guitar, as it were. Uh, the other thing that's gonna be really important for the solo, and I didn't realize this until I had already tapped it out and I actually got my hands on the guitar and started playing with it, was pay really close attention to the dynamics he uses. He, he'll start a phrase out louder and then he'll taper off and get really quiet. And when you do that, I discovered, um, that it's easier to hit the phrasing right and make it connect the way it should. It just feels right and it's easier to play if you uh, get the dynamics right. So for example, this first phrase starts off like this. Like it gets down, it starts off kind of loud and then it gets down to almost nothing. And I found that if I really do that and pay attention to that, that it made it a lot easier to play. So um, there are really only two basic scale shapes used throughout this entire solo, and I'll show them to you right now. Since we're in B minor, I'm just thinking B minor pentatonic, six string root note, first finger starting, just the classic minor pentatonic shape, right? And the chord that I see over that is just this B minor, the bar chord using the E minor shape. Now the next shape um, that we're gonna be using is just the next shape. So if I'm thinking about this shape for my B minor, I'm just gonna start here on this B as well and think about that exact same shape. I don't even have to think about a new shape. I just think same relative to where I start, but I have to shift up when I get to the B string because of the way the guitar is too. See how this shape, other than the B string, is the exact same skip two, skip one, skip one, skip one. Same thing starting on this B, skip two, skip one, adjust for the B string, skip one, skip one. And the chord that I'm seeing for this is just a B minor, sorry, a D minor shape, playing a B minor chord, right? So those, that's the two important shapes that I'm playing throughout this entire solo. And um, we'll get into this more here in a second. Let's actually start learning where, you know, the first couple licks here, and then I'll tell you, uh, unlock some other concepts out of these shapes that I don't know if he's actually thinking about them or if he just plays from his heart, but these shapes will help you be able to play from your heart better by using your head, if that makes any sense. So it starts off, and there, let me say this, there are a couple different ways to play this. 
You can play a phrase in this shape or you can play a phrase on the next shape up. I'm playing it the way I found it the easiest to play and the way I think he's probably playing it just based on the live videos I've seen because he never plays the same thing twice. He just doesn't. So um, I'll go over the way I like to play and then I'll show you some alternate ways to do it too as we go along so you can kind of choose for yourself the way you play. But here's how we start. It starts off on a B on the seventh fret of the high E string. You just play that and it's a dotted half note. So for, so for three beats and put some vibrato on it. And I'm not <laughs> the best at BB King vibrato, but I have watched a lot of him. And the way he does it, if he's on a high E string, his hand still comes out here like this, but he just bends up. And to do that, you have to really get a good callus built here in the middle of your fingertip to do that. It might take a while to develop that, but it's worth, worth it if you like BB King, right? Now, if it's on the B string, he could do up too, but he, sometimes he pulls down, kind of the same thing though, but he has his thumb right here and his finger laid back, so he gets kind of a fulcrum there. Anyway, so one, two, three. And on four, I like to come up here to this B and hit that on four, and it's a staccato marker over that note, so you hit it and cut it short, okay? So. And from there you go. And that's in the next measure. These are all eighth notes for this next measure. So just 10th fret, bent up a quarter step, just a tiny bend with your index finger, then 12, 10 on the B string. And then from there, I make a shift down. And so for that first little part of the leg, I'm thinking this minor pentatonic scale, right? So, and then I shift down to this one, ninth fret of the G string with a quarter step bend. Okay, then seventh fret of the G string with my index finger. Now I'm fully in this shape, right? So ninth fret, quarter step bend, seven twice, back to nine on the G string, then roll your third finger over to the ninth fret of the D string, and then back to the seventh fret of the G string with a quarter step bend and then back to nine on the D string three times. And you hit two eighth notes and a quarter note with some vibrato on it. So let me play that first little phrase for you and then we'll talk about um, kind of where things are coming from here as far as the shapes a little bit more. Actually, we'll, we'll finish this phrase and then we'll talk about that because it's a really important concept called uh, BB's box. Here you go. One, two, three, four. Okay, from there to finish off these measures over the one chord, the B minor chord, I just go back to seven of the D string, and then I roll my index finger over to seven of the G string, and then third finger up to ninth fret of the G string, and I bend that up and put some vibrato on it. Okay? And that's tied to the quarter note in the next measure, the one of the next measure, so. The hardest part about this is putting the vibrato on with a full step bend and then putting the vibrato on it. That takes quite a bit of strength, and if you're not used to it, just give it some time, and make it part of your daily practice, and it will come. Chelsea's uh, been working on that for the past couple months, and it's really coming along for her. And then on two and of that fourth measure, you just hit seven of the B string and seven of the high E string. You have to roll your finger. So this is a classic blues, like, and then you rest for the next two beats. So let me play that whole first phrase and then we'll talk about BB's box a little bit and how I really, I'm only thinking about one tiny, tiny little shape as I'm playing most of this, these first four measures. So here you go. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now let's look at a little bit of a different concept with something called BB's Box. And this is a tiny little fragment that you can use to play anywhere on the fretboard to kind of break out of the standard minor pentatonic box, as it were, right? Even though it, it is a box in itself. So if you have this B minor pentatonic, you have another root note B right here on the ninth fret of the D string. So if you think about that as your root or home base and just abandon kind of everything else, you just have a root there, a lowered seventh there, back to your root, a lowered third, 
and a fourth right there. And that's, those are the only four notes that I'm going to consider myself with. And there's a lot of really awesome notes in there. It's almost like an arpeggio within itself that you can use to play over a blues chord change, right? In this case, it's a B minor. The root, the lower seventh, the lower third are all chord tones. And you can bend that fourth up to a fifth. Really convenient. So you can find a B or any chord anywhere on the guitar if I wanted to do a G. I can just use that G. If I wanted to do an A, I could use this A. But in this case, we're in a B. Okay, we're on B. So we start off with... Okay, and now we've moved our home base to this B. We can do BB's box here too, the exact same thing. This B, the lower seventh, the lower third, and the fourth. Then the fourth up to the fifth if you want, right? So same exact box. Just an octave higher. And that's one of the reasons that I like to play this this way. I'll show you why. So if we go, boom. As soon as I hit that 12th fret up here, I automatically think of this BB's box. So those notes are out of BB's box. And then as soon as I come down here to the 9th fret of the G string, I'm automatically shifting to this BB's box. But the notes are... So all of those notes from down here are from BB's box, and all of the notes except for the first seventh fret up here are from this BB's box. So check it out and try to visualize. Try to visualize those just those two boxes instead of these two giant shapes, uh, minor pentatonic shapes. So if I have this box up here, then I move down to this box. And then once I get to this point, I just think uh, B minor pentatonic right to finish this off. And that's the whole first four measures of this. So it's a couple different ways to think about it. Now you could play this whole first part like this. You could play that whole entire thing in this B minor pentatonic box right here. You could do that. Uh, the only reason I, again, like I said, I don't do it like that is because I like the feeling of BB's box. It keeps it really simple. You do have to jump around more, but also BB King has a habit or an ism of starting on one note here, like, and then, and then going back and, and jumping around with that box. So that's why I'm surmising that uh, he's playing it that way, but I could be wrong, could be right, but this is the way I like to play it. Okay, the next measure goes to an E minor, the four chord, and uh, the lick right here is 10th fret of the high E string. Bent up a whole step with some vibrato. Then let it down, regular 10, and then seven of the high E string. And all this happening here is, since I'm over the four chord, this 10th fret bent up a whole step is the four of the scale, so it's the root note of the chord I'm playing over. It's an E. And when I let it back down, that is the lowered seventh of that chord. And this note is the fifth of that chord. And the way I think about this, I just see the shape. I, that note on top is the fifth. That's the lowered seventh, and that's the E is the root note. Okay, so that's how I'm thinking about this. You don't have to think about it like that, but it is good to be aware of what notes you're hitting. As far as like, if I know that's the fourth, like if I know this is a root, lower third of the minor pentatonic, fourth is right there, okay? So I can hit, target that note if I know I'm gonna be playing over the four chord, the E minor in this case. So that, that lick over the four. Okay, and here comes a little tricky bit. This one gave me a little bit of trouble as far as really hearing what he did, but I think I got it right. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, if you think this is right or not. I come up here uh, to the 12th fret of the B string, and that's just the root note of, you know, what a key we're in, the B minor. So, that's a B. And then I hit that once on beat two, and then I come over here to 10th fret of the high E string, bend it up just a quarter step. And then I hit the 12th fret of the high E string unbent, and that is our, again, that's our E note, we're still playing over the four, so that's our root note. And then I bend it up a quarter step, 
and then I bend it up a half step, and then I let it back down and play it just normal 12. So I'm kind of playing around with some dissonance over the four chord with the root, with the root note. And I had to practice this really slowly to get it right, so. So one, two, and three, and four, and. So I'm gonna play that whole thing over the four chord over measures five and six for your one, two, three, four. Okay, and from there you go back down to B minor. So I'm going back down, thinking B minor pentatonic here. I'm switching back to this kind of uh, mental picture of this B minor. And the lick here is 10th fret with my pinky, full step. Let it back down. And these are just quarter notes. So one, two, with some vibrato, three, and then four and is the next beat, so. Then back, let 10 back down, and hit it on uh, the and of one with some vibrato. And then hit it again on the and of two. And then for three, go to seven, fret seven. And then I kind of make a switch here. So that's the, over that, little section I'm staying with this B minor pentatonic. So I'm gonna play that for you. One, two, three, four. Okay, next, remember how I said BB King will hit a note and then it'll jump up to a different octave and hit it? I think that's what he's doing here too. So we just hit a B note here. On beat four of measure eight, he jumps up to this B and switches to this BB's box up here on beat four with some vibrato. So let me just go back to measure five and play those four measures for you. One, two, three, four. And then the next measure is where we switch to a G major seven chord and we just go 10, quarter step bend. 12, 12, back to 10, another quarter step bend, then 12 with a B string for a quarter note with some vibrato, and then 12 again on beat four, but staccato there. So that's the lick over the G major seven chord. So it'll be, with a pickup beat, it'll be one, two, three, four. And one more time, a little bit slower. And as far as the chord tones, what he's playing right here, uh, he starts off kind of telegraphing on beat four of measure eight. That's the third of the G chord, which is a B. And I'm thinking about this G major seven shape here, even though I'm really I'm just thinking BB's box. And this is the third of the chord, the G major seven. This is the fifth of the chord. I'll make this this six, back to the fifth, and back to the third. So that's really all I'm thinking. And I'm. I would imagine he's not getting that technical about it. He could have, but he's probably just letting his ear got him with the pentatonic skill there. So over the G chord, one, two, three. And these concepts like a BB's box and hitting different chord tones uh, out of different chord shapes that are surrounding the pentatonic skills are really important concepts and a lot of them are covered in the new Blues Hound course that I'm just about finished filming. It'll be up in the next couple months on guitarfam.com. Okay, next over the F sharp seven chord, we have a rest on beat one, and I play the lick. That's it. And then all I'm doing is starting on the 12th fret of the high E string. And I guess I'm still thinking about BB's box, right? But really over the F sharp, this I'm thinking is the lowered seventh of F sharp, E. And I'm bending up so I hit that once, hit it again, bend it up a whole step, let it back down, and then quickly pull off to 10. So lower seven, bend up to the root note, the F sharp, let it back down, and then hit 10 again, and I'm just hammering on to 12. And that's the lake over the F sharp seven, one. And he gets really quiet there too on the, 
so that's one thing to watch out for. Uh, the quieter or the softer I play that, the easier time I had hitting that too. So that whole measure over F will be one, two, three, four, one. And then rest on that last little 16th note, cut it short. And then the last two measures, you just go back to B minor and I focus my attention right back down here on our B minor pentatonic scale. And I'm just, I call this lick the nasty lick, nasty. One of the most important blues lick ever. If you can, that's all you can play over the one, the four and the five, it's gonna sound good. So all I'm doing is playing 10th fret, which is the lower third of B minor. Bending it up a quarter step, not ever quite getting to the major third because we're playing in a minor blues, right? Just enough to make it sound like a, a, a freight train at midnight being chased by a hound dog, right? And the rhythm here is and he gets really quiet here. That's an important thing for the feel of this too. And he cuts that last quarter note short. So one and two and three and four, one. So I'll play that for you in time. One, two, three, four. Okay, so let me play those last four measures for you and I'll play the little pickup 12th fret of the B string here to get us into it as well. One, two, three. So take this one little measure at a time, one four bar phrase at a time, really try to think about the um, chord tones you're hitting out of the minor pentatonic over the chords that are going by, and then what chord shapes you're trying to see as well. So B minor, E minor, G major seven, F sharp seven. And even just simplifying, just seeing BB's box here in B, BB's box here in B. And the cool thing about that concept is it's movable anywhere. So if I was playing I'd say in, in a song that was an A blues, I'd just start on an A instead. It's much easier to think about than just playing an entire giant minor pentatonic scale right too. All right, that's it for the solo. If you have any questions about it, leave a comment below. Um, I'm just finishing up uh, filming our new blues course called The Blues Hound. And there's a lot of concepts covered like this, really important things for being able to play through blues chord changes covered in there. So be looking for that on the Guitar Fam website. And again, if you haven't created your complimentary account, go there and do that. It's a really good community full of really cool people, and there are a lot of great resources for you. I'll see you in the next video.